Hi, I'm Gretchen Nielsen, Executive Director of From the Top. From the Top celebrates the talents and stories of young musicians from around the country. For over two decades, we have showcased these young musicians on our NPR radio show. But From the Top is more than a singular performance. We believe that young musicians have the power to create positive change in their communities. So part of our work is providing focused leadership training and community engagement opportunities for every young musician with whom we work. Each day, I'm inspired by the dedication, the persistence, the creativity of our young musicians. And that is why we're working so hard to bring you the incredible stories and transformative artistry of these young people. Whether you've been with us for weeks, months, years, and especially if you're new to us, thank you so much. If you believe in the work of our young musicians, please consider making a gift. Your support will ensure the future from the top and will fuel the many ways that we are able to amplify the soulful, the insightful, the joyful voices of our young musicians. Thank you. Hi folks, Peter Dugan here with a couple of pre-show announcements. First, Hayden Eidson, the young cellist who you're about to meet, his appearance on From the Top is sponsored by Nancy and Richard Lubin. Nancy, Richard, thank you so much for all you do to support the arts and for believing in this young cellist. The other announcement is that if you have any cough drops or hard candies, please take them out of your bag now and unwrap them before the music begins. Thanks everyone and enjoy the concert. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another night of beautiful music here at From the Top. I'm your host, as always, Peter Dugan, and we have a very wonderful program of cello music for you tonight. So perhaps I should have said cello. Uh, that would have been a more appropriate greeting. But seeing as it's our last uh, show before the holiday season, I thought I'd get decked out. And uh, I'm really excited about this one. We have two cellists. First of all, we have Hayden Eidson. He's joining us from Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, near Boston. And uh, he's going to be featured on one of our upcoming shows. And we also have Nathan Chan, who is an all-star alum of the program. And he's the assistant principal cellist of the Seattle Symphony. So he's joining us from Seattle. Uh, he's a big deal, folks. Uh, he's played as a soloist with the likes of the San Francisco Symphony. Uh, he recorded and I love this, with the legendary singer Roberta Flack at the age of only 13. He was on our program for the first time back in 2009. So he's going to be playing, Hayden's going to be playing, we're all going to be chatting, and later in the evening we're going to play our game, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. So I want to encourage all of you to get into the chat section, tell us where you're watching from, let us know how you're enjoying the program, and very importantly, participate in the game when the time comes. And uh, now... Without any further ado, let's bring on Hayden Eidson.
Bravo, bravo, Hayden. Thank you. That's beautiful. Okay. Nathan Chan, ladies and gentlemen, and just before that, we heard Bravo. Hayden Eidson. They're both part of our From the Top family. Uh, Nathan was on the program back in 2009. He actually hosted one of our galas uh, about 2014, 
Uh, and Hayden is going to be in, on one of our upcoming shows using our blanket fort system where, where we send out remote uh, kits that enable the musicians to actually record themselves at home with blanket forts used as acoustic padding. So uh, really excited to have both of you with us tonight. We're going to get to talk. We're going to get to hear more music. Uh, I just loved both of those performances. And I, I think it's time for each of you to just introduce yourselves and tell us what we just heard. Uh, let's start with, with Hayden. Okay. Hi, I'm Hayden Eitzen. I'm 15 years old, and I'm from Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. And what did you play? And I just played Estrellita arranged by Heifetz and written by Ponce. And now we have Nathan, the master cellist. Uh, Nathan, what did you play? Oh, thanks for that introduction, Peter. Um, my name's Nathan Chan. I'm 27 years young, and I just performed for you The Eternal Vow by Tan Doon from the movie, legendary movie, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I loved it. it you really put me in a trance with that performance. It was magical. Oh, good. Yeah. Nathan, what did you think of young Hayden's performance? Oh, it was so amazing. And uh, oh, I, just, I just love the tone and, and sound that you got so much from that piece. And it just confirms for me how much better cello songs are uh, than violin pieces. But the thing that's interesting about our two pieces, Hayden, is that they both come from movies right you do you, you you love movies you love watching them yeah so uh, well i'm actually not that big of a movie watcher oh whoops my reason, bad <laughs> but but the but Esther Eita, it, it wasn't originally written for a movie but it appeared in, in the 1939 film which is called they shall have music and that film is, is special because yasha heifetz the legendary violinist was the main star the movie and there's a scene in the movie where he plays Estraita for a crowd of children and his playing was amazing it was also really touching in that in the context of the scene mm. to see all the children just love his performance what yeah that's amazing Nathan do you have a favorite moment when music features in film like is there a moment that just really grabs you while you think about I'll go first because I know it's a tough question but for Please. me, it's the movie Philadelphia, when uh, Tom Hanks uh -huh. is listening to Maria Callas and um, to a recording of, of Maria Callas singing uh -huh. La Mama Morta. And it's like, I watched that movie in, in high school and that scene, I, I started just crying. It is so powerful. Um, can you, is, there, wow. is there a moment in, in film that you can remember just music being used and captured to, to its fullest? Well, I remember the the first time I watched The Sound of Music was such a immensely powerful moment for me. Uh, I used to watch it with my family on these big old things called laser discs, which were basically like giant DVDs. And, uh, you know, growing up with a film like The Sound of Music was really cemented kind of the inherent power of it. And I actually recently rewatched The Sound of Music, believe it or not, on election night. Uh, I was feeling super stressed out. I was at, uh, with a couple of friends and you know what? We said we need a little break from this and we turned on the sound of music and that feeling just came back. All of those good feelings and what a what a moment that was. I love hearing that. Yeah, what a, <laughs> what a joy, what a joy. Hayden, um, yeah. you mentioned uh, Heifetz, of course, not a not a cellist, but a violinist. Yeah. But we're going to get, get into hearing some more music that was maybe originally for the violin, and then you guys just stole, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we cellists like stealing violin reps, so. Right. I mean, why not? Right. Okay, so for all the violin <laughs> lovers in the chat, please take it easy on the criticism here. Um, and uh, if you're a cello lover, then let us know. Uh, but we're going to hear now, Nathan, you're going to play for us. Uh, is this your own arrangement? Well, a dear friend of mine rearranged one of the classic pieces in the violin repertoire, his Gigue from his second partita. Of course, it's typically in D minor, but uh, we've transposed it to the wonderful key of G minor. And I think it has a lovely 
lovely ring to it. And before I begin, I, I would just like to defend the stealing of repertoire. We cellists have had so much less time in terms of repertoire being developed for us in the same way that violinists have. Yes, so I absolutely. defend our right to steal violin music and hopefully my performance uh, gives it yes, this absolutely. argument justice, right, <laughs> All right, yeah. bring it on. And Nathan, you haven't heard this okay. in a while, but would you take it from the top? Ooh. <laughs> Chan, um, I would like to hear now what Hayden. What do you think of that performance? Wow, that was incredible! I've never, I've, I've known that piece for a long time and listened to it many times, but I never thought of stealing it for the. Cello. It's a great pinky workout. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I mean, that performance did justify stealing by. Oh, performance. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I loved it. Um, we're going to jump into a lightning round where I ask questions and you two answer the first thing that comes to mind. And Hayden, you're gonna always go first, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. Ooh. Since we spoke about movies a little bit, first question is, what's your favorite movie? I'd have to say Talon is Hunger. Tell, tell me more about that. So Talon is Hunger is, is a movie featuring my teacher, Paul Katz, and Whoa. it follows yeah, it follows his students over a period of seven years and shows the, the student in depth, shows the student teacher relationship, shows how the students progress, the challenges they face. And it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. Nice answer. Uh, how about you, Nathan? Um, probably my favorite modern movie is the movie Inception. Oh. Uh, my favorite romantic movie is the French movie Amelie. And my favorite horror film is a South Korean film called Old Boy. Old Boy. You have to say it like that, too. Old Boy. Old Boy. Now I want to watch it. It's so that. hard to pick a single film. It's so hard. I mean, that was they, great. You were like, here's the genre. Here's the answer. That's fine. I'll yeah. take it. I think um, it's important to have categories. You need yes. those categories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about quarantine. You know, it's been a tough time for everyone, but could you name mm. a silver lining, something that's actually been 
a, a good thing that's that you found during quarantine uh hayden hey well i guess if it's i guess zooming with friends has been the best thing about quarantine that i've been able to talk to friends a lot and catch up even though it's over zoom it's still wonderful to be able to interact yeah it, it's it's not like the real thing but got to give zoom some credit uh, yeah, better than nothing. Better than nothing. Yeah. How about you, Nathan? Um, I have to say, particularly my cooking skills have improved quite greatly. You know, I used to be the guy and a guy. I, I've been known in college for dinner. I used to eat eight hard-boiled eggs. That was kind of my style. Uh, I can calmly <laughs> and confidently say I've graduated to making more pasta, soups, and salads. And so my body feels much better. My cholesterol intake, I think, must be much lower. And yeah. I'm very pleased to say yeah. that. <laughs> I think maybe you watched um, The Beauty and the Beast too many times when Gaston <laughs> sings about, you know, when I was a lad, I ate 12 dozen eggs or whatever it is. <laughs> That's right. That's it, right? That's it. <laughs> Roughly exactly. the size of a barge. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I apologize for that, folks. Let's, no, that was great. Let's stay in this sort of uh, foodie world and talk about mm. East Coast versus West Coast. Okay, Nathan, mm. you're in the Seattle yeah. uh, area. Hayden, you're mm -hmm. in uh, the Boston area. I want you each to talk about a food that you love that's specific to your neck of the woods. Let's start with Hayden. I guess it would have to be Boston cream pie. Like also when oh. you have the Boston cream pie filling inside of cupcakes too. So anything related to Boston cream pie is, is wonderful. Nice. May I, I ask guess what's in a Boston cream? It sounds so ambiguous. I actually don't know the specifics uh, of it. All I know about it is that it tastes amazing. Other than that, yeah, don't it's, know anything it's a mystery to me it. too. But Nathan, like if you have a, a cream filled donut, this I know, like regular oh. vanilla cream is just like very, oh, very yeah. white. And then the Boston cream uh -huh. has more of a yellowish uh, tint to it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but there sure. also is a difference in flavor. If, if any of you who are watching this yeah. know, please tell us in the chat. Um, Nathan, what's your favorite <laughs> West Coast specialty? I mean, I got to say, I, you know, my, my Asian background, it must be in my DNA. I just got to have my seafood. Uh, mm -hmm. Dungeness crabs, raw oysters. Uh, you you East Coasters have the the beauty of the the Maine lobster, which I'm very envious of. Oh, yeah, but cool. I gotta say, I think we have you on oysters and and dungy crabs. Uh, they're getting expensive. more and more expensive lately. You know, I remember when you could get a happy hour for a dollar an oyster. Right. Now, like your happy hour, your quote unquote happy hour is like two fifty, two seventy five an oyster. And I'm like, wow. I don't know. So actually. One thing I've learned over this past year is how to shuck my own oysters. And you can actually save a lot of money uh, if you go to your local seafood market, get your raw oysters yourself, and, and shuck them yourself. Man, you, wow. that was a journey, that answer, because at first I was like, <laughs> this dude is so fancy. He's going out, he's getting oysters and dungy crabs. And then it ended up with like, this is a, this is a handyman. He's shucking his own stuff. So um, you got to yeah, you got to get the good stuff, but at the right get price. The good stuff. <laughs> OK, so so now now it's time for our show and tell portion. Hayden, do you have a prized possession nearby that you could share with us? Yes, yeah, so I do. Great. And there's a little bit of a story, but it. it is a cello. It's a, a half size cello. And you guys, you can see it. It's a what size cello? Lost. Half size. Cello. Yeah, it's tiny. Yeah. Wow. And so it's very tiny. And the reason that this cello is special to me is because the first time I soloed with an orchestra was on this cello wow. a few years back, and I played the Elgar Cello Concerto. Wow. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever gotten, to, since then, to play the Elgar Concerto on the full-size cello? I haven't actually worked on it. I have fiddled around. It's going to feel like... On full -size <laughs> it feels so Rah! different. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Nice. That's yeah. so cute, that little cello. Thank you for sharing. Nathan, what yeah. do you have nearby? Um, I have something kind of completely different. Uh, I'm actually not in my usual space right now, so I don't have my usual prized possessions, but I actually have a, a photo and an object. This is a, a photo of 
of me with my grandparents uh, when we had a, the wonderful a privilege to go on a family vacation together to Hawaii. I'll, I'll hold it up to the camera so you all can see. Sure. And, um, you know, uh, well, it, not to take it too dark of a turn, but actually my, my grandma recently passed away. Oh. And um, it's, been, uh, it's been, you know, a, a wonderful reminder of uh, all the good memories that I've had with her. And, you know, I, she was always such a music lover. Mm -hmm. Growing up when I was a little kid, I would bring my, my cello over to my grandparents' house and practice all the time. And she was always so supportive, whether it was uh, her uh, in the kitchen uh, cooking up a storm or sometimes when she was on TV, checking out the stock market. Uh, but uh, with that, I had these shells that were from that trip. And I think it's a, a great reminder that life is precious, but it's also temporary. And even though we live such beautiful and wonderful lives, even something as simple as a, a little shell necklace can and probably will outlive us one day. So. It's an important reminder to make the most of the time we have here on this earth and really connect with people around us and, and share the music that we have, uh, this wonderful gift of, of making with others. And then once, once life's over, that's, uh, that's sort of how, how it ends. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. It's really special. It's really beautiful. Thanks. Um, it's actually a really great segue into our next piece, which is sort of an elegy of, of sorts. And um, Hayden, you first discovered this as a, also as a violin arrangement, right? Yes, I did. So Fritz Kreisler did a famous arrangement of this piece. And I've always been a huge fan of Kreisler's playing. And li I've listened to his recording of, of this piece probably over a thousand times, to be mm. honest. Wow. And it's just an amazing arrangement and i really love it all right well the as as you may know i'm i'm half irish and so that that side of me is really looking forward to to danny boy let's hear it Beautiful, beautiful, just lovely. If you're just joining us now, that was Hayden Eidson, 
Uh, he's coming to us from Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. And we also have Nathan Chan joining us from Seattle. He's the assistant principal cellist of the Seattle Symphony and one of our all-star alums. Uh, if you're enjoying the program, please consider making a donation to help support our efforts. It's uh, our year-end fundraising push, and uh, we certainly could use any help that, that you're able to share with us, and we really, really appreciate your generosity. So thank you so much for that. Um, now it's time uh, for our game. It's maybe uh, my favorite part of the show when I get to try to stump you guys. Oh, boy. And uh, this one, oh, every, every week it's a, it's a slightly different kind of game. This one is is similar to the one from two weeks ago. If you guys were watching, we did two truths and a lie with very obscure musical instruments. This time, it's two truths and a lie with very obscure musical compositions, and uh, specifically uh -oh. from the Fluxus movement. Yikes. Now, those of you who don't know what the what? Fluxus movement is, this was like in the 60s and 70s. It was preceded by Dadaism and influenced by John Cage, especially. Uh, so these were folks who wrote performance art type pieces where instead of a score, uh, the music was basically, um, in, there were instructions for how to perform the work. Nice. And, uh, and it's all compiled in this incredible book called the Fluxus Workbook. And uh, you can actually download it uh, online and it's a fantastic way to spend some time. Um, hours of entertainment. So the way this is gonna work is I will read instructions for three pieces, okay? Two of them are actually taken word for word from the Fluxus notebook. One of them I made up, and then you have to try to decide which is the one that I made up. And I want everyone who's watching to participate in the chat and tell us which you think is the one that I made up. Okay, so here we go. Round one, there's three rounds. Round one. The title of the piece is Achu, and the instructions are as follows. With the use of a vacuum cleaner, which in this occasion blows out instead of sucking in, the performer envelops the audience with a small cloud made from three ounces of finely ground pepper. Achu. Okay. <laughs> the next one is ice cream piece. And here are the instructions. Performer buys an ice cream cone and then A, eats it, or B, gives it to a stranger, or C, waits until it melts completely, then eats the cone, or D, on finishing the piece, buys another ice cream cone. So it's sort of a choose your own adventure mm. style piece. That's the ice cream piece, okay? And finally, autumn piece, autumn piece. This one is like a step-by-step -step instructions. One, cover a piano with soft green leaves. Two, remove the leaves. Three, wait until the piano is severely out of tune. Four, cover the piano with crisp brown leaves. And five, jump on the piano until it is destroyed. So one of those <laughs> I made up, the other oh, two are wow. truly from the Fluxus notebook, uh, workbook. Is it Achu, ice cream piece, or autumn piece? And Hayden, you're gonna go first. Oh, okay, this is a hard one. Uh, I love these. I'm gonna have to say Autumn Piece. Autumn Piece? Okay, That's one vote for Autumn guess. Piece. Nathan? Um, I, I gotta go against the grain. I feel like there was a little smile on Peter's face when he talked about the, of course, uh, piano-related one. So my game theory guess is gonna go with the Ice Cream Piece as the fake one. Okay, the correct answer is Autumn Piece. Dang it! <laughs> and Ice Cream Piece is a real one. It was composed by um, Albert Fine in 1966. Uh, nice, Hayden. And Achu was composed by Jean Dupuis. Okay, next round. Next round. Hayden's up one nothing. Next round. Okay. Home cooking. Prepare a meal, bring it to a restaurant, and politely offer one serving to every diner. Number two, fruit sonata. And the instructions are, play baseball with a fruit. And finally, wow. bird call. Make a telephone call to a bird. If you do not know a bird who has a telephone, make a telephone call in which you make bird noises. 
Okay, so again, it was home cooking, fruit sonata, or bird call. And this time, Nathan's going to guess first. Oh, my goodness. Those are all excellent. Um, ha. Ah, I want to say the first one, the restaurant one. A home cooking, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to have to say the second one. Fruit sonata, play baseball with the fruit. Yeah. Okay, the correct answer was home cooking. I made that one up. And, oh, yes. Good um, job, Nathan. Tie it was, up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit Sonata was a real piece composed by Ken Friedman, one of the major uh, Fluxus composers. Okay, for our tiebreaker round, these are very all very short. Very short, okay? Okay. okay. The first one is titled, See You in Your Dreams, and the instructions are, Appear in another's dreams <laughs> okay the second one is titled bedtime and the instructions are take a nap or stay awake and the third one is entitled cat and the instructions are get a cat and, Dang. and hayden you get to choose which is the one that i made up see you in your dreams bedtime or cat those are, this is very hard. Uh, I think cat, probably. Okay. Dang it, that's what I was gonna guess too, but it's a tiebreaker. It's a tiebreaker, ah, be brave. Yeah. Okay, let's go with, ah, I'm killing myself. Ah, I gotta go with, see you in a dr the, the dream one. See you in your dreams. You're both wrong. I stumped you. Uh, those no! are both real no. pieces. And the one that I made up is bedtime. Take a nap or stay awake. So I like that one. So it's going <laughs> to, that's, I play that piece every day. Um, <laughs> so it, it's going to be a tie and that's okay. Um, you both did great. Uh, and I hope all of you who played along at home in the chat section, uh, enjoyed and go check out the Fluxus workbook for more uh, fun. This is, I mean, seriously, That's it's amazing. A, it's, stuff. A hoop. it's a real riot. Well, uh, before we close out with two more pieces of music, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, it's been such a pleasure to have you all. I hope you all have a really wonderful and safe holiday. And uh, I want to especially thank Nathan and Hayden, you guys, such a treat to spend some time together and to hear you perform such great cellists, both of you. Um, I think we're going to close things out with Nathan's going to go first, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, you know, uh, it's so important that all of us stay so healthy uh, during these quarantine days. It's easy to get hold up and, you know, uh, not take care of your body. And I think one of the biggest recommendations I have for all of you out there is to get your daily dose of eight glasses of water a day or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, Water is such an important theme in music, wouldn't you both say? I'd, I'd have to agree with oh, that. Oh, yeah. I agree. Right, right. So, uh, you know, on the subject of water, you know, there's a particular animal that makes its home in bodies of water all the time. Yeah. And uh, this will make more sense in a moment, but I'd like to finish off this program with the one, the only, this is The Swan by Camille Sanson. Oh, here I was thinking you were gonna play the muskrat, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, yeah, play the swan. Okay, well, we, I'll do, I'll do a uh, Fluxus muskrat for you. Okay, here okay, we go. Great.
Oh, that was oh, absolutely gosh. beautiful. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Nathan Thank Chan, you. ladies and gentlemen, the assistant principal uh, cellist of the Seattle Symphony and a From the Top alum. And finally, um, we're going to hear one more time from Hayden Eidson. And Hayden, do you also have a water-themed piece for us by chance? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm going to be playing At the Fountain by Davidov, the renowned Russian cellist and composer. Love this piece. All right. Take it from yeah, the top, you. my friend. Eidson and the bow arm of steel. 
Wow. Fabulous. Bravo, bravo. Nathan Chan, ladies and gentlemen. Hayden Eidson. Give it Thanks up for them. Everybody. Thank you Thank so much. You, On behalf everyone. of everyone at From the Top, I'm Peter Dugan. Thank you for being with us and have a wonderful and safe holiday. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye.